I'm going to approach this video a little bit differently than I typically do with my videos. Um, I'm working in the shop here and there's a lot going on within the shop and it can get kind of noisy. Uh, you know, people are in there talking, every radio going, uh, fixing equipment. So I thought I'd just remove all the uh, sound from inside the shed and provide this uh, voiceover. So hopefully this translates the same and you can get the same type of benefit from it. Uh, this project that I'm working on here, it's going to be, uh, it's not necessarily going to be all that complicated. It's one thing about the Easy Loader I like is its pure simplicity. It's what, I mean, all they are is an articulating jib crane and with the electric over hydraulic uh, systems on it. So it's just a matter of taking this boom apart to get it off the tripod so that I can remove the tripod and either repair it myself or take it to somebody else to uh, have it fixed for me. So the job at hand here is basically just disassembling the entire unit uh, to be able to pull off the boom and then pull off the tripod. So here I'm taking the hydraulics off. These hydraulics are run through the spindle. Um, it's a, I'm so happy that they designed this unit uh, in this manner with this uh, spinning spindle so you can go 360 degrees all the way around without worrying about uh, you know binding up your hydraulic hoses or having to make that full circle back around so you don't kink any hoses. This just allows you to go 360 degrees all the way around the machine and not think twice about anything. What they have done is they have sent the hydraulics up through this tube and that just allows that the hydraulics to be completely centered so that it can rotate 360 degrees around. This boom is uh, attached by axial bearings on that tube and what I'm going to do is remove that nut that holds the, the bearings tight together. It's got a set key on it on one of the... Uh, it has a set key washer underneath which is a good idea so I'm, I just have to remove the tabs to be able to allow myself to take that nut off so that I can then remove um, the bearing the top bearing so we can pull that boom up and off the bottom bearing I've had this boom for uh, must be 10 years now and I have yet to put grease on this bearing and I was just really curious all these years and how that bearing was holding itself uh, because the the, uh, the seal underneath isn't you know 100% and it's just like a, uh, a silicone cap seal on the top so I was always curious on how much moisture humidity would get inside and damage that bearing inside but that bearing was in relatively excellent shape one thing about working in the shop is when you know a a guy needs a second set of hands to be able to take something apart or lift something heavy. Uh, there's always somebody there to give you a hand. So here's my brother Adam uh, helping me pull this loader apart. Under protest, he, he didn't want it to be filmed, so I'm doing the best I can to keep him off my film here. <laughs> He's not as photogenic as maybe I pretend to be. But it's sure nice to have somebody else to be able to help with those awkward lift situations. And I take advantage of his assistance later on in this uh, video documentary also uh, as we take the, the main um, arm, or the main mast, I mean, apart to be able to uh, remove that tripod. Easy Loader uses two hydraulic cylinders to uh, level out the tripod, which then puts that boom in a level plane to be swung all the way around the truck. Um, and the level is done through, well you can either do it manually just by two switches by adjusting the hydraulic cylinders manually. And they also have a auto level feature on this tripod which brings the um, brings that tripod automatically to a level plane which is really nice because you can bring the, my B yards there. We're up in the hills here, so we're not flat. And manually adjusting it 
takes a little bit of time and it's you know very subjective on what actually is level so if you can press a button like they have a feature on here it just automatically brings it to a level plane and you don't have to worry about nothing it just brings it level and saves a lot of time through the day so you can see the boom it's made from very heavy tube very well designed uh, very well engineered and I'm certain I haven't looked for these yet from my bearing store but I'm certain these bearings are stock so my plan is to go and buy new bearings for this unit and buy the high quality ones on this tripod you can see the problem here ignore my poor job of welding uh, I was out in the field with a stick welder and I couldn't get my uh, rod in that tight spot because the boom was in place and I did a terrible job so I'm kind of embarrassed to even show you guys that but uh, regardless of that you can see the stress points on this tripod no cracks down the sides but cracks are all the way around the top and starting to crack along the bottom here so that is what we have to uh, fix we have to address that issue somehow either be it uh, just simply uh, repairing, rewelding, you know, grind out, reweld the uh, the gussets up the top, and have a professional weld that all back together properly, or re-engineer some kind of a, a better plate brace that we can fit over top to eliminate that flex. I'm sure you guys can appreciate that I'm working on this easy loader, disassembling it blind. I don't quite before I tackled this project I you know wasn't quite exactly sure how they put things together and what sequence they put things together and why they did that so as I'm taking it apart I'm just in a sense uh, figuring out their engineering process and their thought process as they built this piece of equipment and I'm first like my impression is they've done a very good job keeping things very basic keeping things very simple and that's exactly the way I like it. It's just for me trying to figure it out, right? I'm not a mechanic. I'm just a, you know, I'm a farmer. I'm very hands-on, so I'm just logical in my thinking and trying to figure out, okay, how does this work? How am I supposed to take it apart? One of those things is these damn hydraulic hoses. How was I supposed to get them through that tube? They have a little slot in that tube to be able to fit these hoses up and through because the crimped end wouldn't fit through. And so I called my brother over and he said well these ends are twist on ends you know they're not actually machine crimped so what I have to do you can't salvage those so I have to cut those off which is no problem because I'm going to be replacing these hydraulic lines anyways and that allows me to be able to pull through the tube and such so I'm going to have to put it back together in the same way uh, the one end of the the hydraulic line. I don't think I'm going to put these ends on. I'm going to get them crimped on properly, but up at the head, I'm going to use this twist on function, just as they've done it here, uh, just to allow me to get those hoses up and through. And there should be no reason why uh, they don't work just like they have over this last 10 years. Now with the uh, crimped ends off, I'm able to pull the hydraulic lines through that tube very easily just like that. Now the next job I have to tackle is to remove that tripod from the main mast. Over the last forever since I've owned the machine, I've owned this thing brand new, uh, I've been greasing the, this knuckle, but I just realized that the grease has not been going through and this pin has seized solid to the tube and I can't can't budge this pin. The pin must be moving on the housing itself. So I have to get that pin out somehow and it just will not budge. I even gone to the length of using a torch to heat along the edge or along the end of that tube just to help expand it a little bit to be able to punch that pin through. And even with my best efforts on trying to do everything I could to get that pin out it's uh, yeah I, I just can't I couldn't get it off every machinist every mechanic 
will, they try not to lecture you, but the easiest maintenance pre preventative measure that you can put towards any machine that you own, be it a boom arm like this or uh, a combine, a tractor, whatever, is grease. Grease, grease, grease. Every ma maintenance schedule needs to start and end with grease. Obviously, I uh, neglected that and I'm seeing the consequence because of that. So now, what I have to do, because I can't get the press up on top of the unit here properly to be able to push those pins out, I have to remove this mast from the frame and put it down onto the deck to where I can kind of fish our little, we have a little bench top shop press which I can put a few tons of pressure down onto to be able to push the pins through. As a hammer is not going to do it so we have to do it with a hydraulic press. So to do that I have to take off the rams, I have to take off the wiring, I have to take you know other pins apart and sensors like this one here need a little trick just to make sure I get my wiring properly when I put it back together and a little bit of assistance from my brother again called him over doing other maintenance projects within the shop and really we need a forklift I mean seriously we need a forklift in the shop or some kind of a lift hoist but we don't right now and for the time being we'll just have to struggle to get this thing out and onto the deck I mean sometimes boy it's worth our life as you can see as I'm just kind of cringing by the look of this because I know I'm standing one foot on it a stepladder and the other foot on the deck and you're just kind of trying to keep balance and there's a, a hundred pounds or more cradled in my arms one slip and I'm on the ground with this thing on top of me it's just like ugh, ay, ay, ay. such a farmer but we got it on the deck and we we're able to uh, get the press into place very awkwardly and I put a little nut on top of the pin and a couple tons of pressure and you can see there it just pow sound like a gunshot like we had probably two and a half tons of pressure down on that pin and just as you can see it here just as it moves it's just like a gunshot pow 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 as she moves down it is tight 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 <clears throat> So we're very able to effectively push this pin out, which is good. And the other side moved a little bit now that I can actually swing the bloody hammer. So that other side of the pin is out, and there we go. It's pretty dry. This pin has not seen grease, or the other one, probably since I purchased the loader. because my grease nipples were malfunctioning. I wasn't being careful enough making sure the grease was getting in. And it's not that high of a wear part that I actually noticed it made any difference or anything. There's no wear or nothing, because it was just turning on the frame itself instead of within the knuckle. <clears throat> so I will shine these pins up, replace these grease nipples, and Make sure I keep grease on this damn thing from now on. It cost me a lot of work. Now with the tripod free, I can take this piece and take it wherever I have to take it to be able to get it fixed up. First thing I'm going to do is grind off my embarrassing weld job. Uh, before I take it to my machinist, I am not going to show him the kind of patchwork I tried to do. So the grinder will help hide that original patch job and then I want to kind of take the paint off just to be able to see if there's any other stress cracks within the metal just looking for metal fatigue. That's about as far as I can get on this project right now. I've ground away my old weld job as much as I can. I couldn't get this mess in here taken out so I'll let my uh, welder look after that and I've polished off all the, the paint and there's definitely a crack from here all the way around all the way around here down to here but it doesn't seem to extend further down 
a shaft, but it does extend underneath. So I'll have to leave it up to his judgment and his guidance on how we're going to reinforce this properly. I have a feeling he's going to want to just simply uh, rebuild this, weld it up, and maybe reinforce over top of it, I'm thinking. Or if I can get him to build a plate to slide over top to reinforce his entire top plate. I'll kind of leave that up to his judgment and see where we go from there.